In our second reading from St. Paul, he goes on quite the exhortation that by believing Jesus rose from the dead, then we will gain eternal life in heaven. And now the cynic can read or hear that, or rather the lazy person can read and hear that and think, well, all I got to do is believe that Jesus rose from the dead and and I'm good. I don't got to go to church. You know, St. Paul's and talk about Sunday Mass, even on days where we lose an hour of sleep. And I don't have to give up meat on Friday. I can eat bacon all I want. And I don't have all these dumb rules to follow and yada, yada. And so all I got to do is believe Jesus rose from the dead. That sounds great, right? Well, no, that's not the case. <laughs> and all of us here know that that's not the case. And the reason that it's not the case isn't because St. Paul is leaving out important details. The reason that we all know that's not the case is once you believe that Jesus rose from the dead, actually believe that he suffered, died, and rose from the dead, that changes things in a radical way. More importantly, we come to believe Jesus rose from the dead not just because our parents or our grandparents or our school teachers or catechists taught us that a long time ago, but we believe it because at some point in our lives, hopefully more than once, we've encountered the risen Jesus. We've met him. We've interacted with him. We've heard from him. And because of that encounter, our life was changed. The very first time it happened was at our baptism. And I'm sure most of us were way too young to remember that encounter. But then it happened again and again through our relationships with each other. It happened through our teachers teaching us, our parents loving us. Through receiving him in the Eucharist. And that's another major change. Yeah, Jesus rose from the dead and we encounter him in each other where two or three are gathered in my name. I am there with them. In our baptism, we have clothed ourselves with Jesus. So by meeting another baptized person and just waking up and looking in the mirror, we see Jesus every day. But he also leaves us himself in the Eucharist. So that at the minimum on Sundays, we receive him and pray that our hearts are open enough to become who we receive so that when we leave these sacred walls, we continue his mission of sharing his love and hopefully others will encounter Christ in us that will then lead to their own conversion or their own reversion back here to where love is truly present. And so friends, it's not enough to just say, I believe he rose from the dead, now let me sleep in on Sunday and eat bacon. That's, it's not enough. If we've actually encountered the risen Christ and we really believe he rose from the dead, that he is God, then that changes our lives dramatically. And then faith is not just a set of beliefs and rules that way too many people diminish it to, but rather faith is a relationship. And it's a deep encounter with the divine. And that's an encounter that will always change our lives for the better. Pope Benedict uh, quoted a, a saint or someone, I don't remember who actually said this, but Pope Benedict would bring it up a lot. He would say that the three steps to the spiritual life are to fall in love, to stay in love, and to let the love decide everything. Now the falling in love is that encountering the risen Jesus and reminding ourselves that he is risen from the dead, that he is God, that he is love. But the real trick is to stay in love. And often we fall out of love for various reasons. A loved one dies unexpectedly. Uh, an illness enters into our life. Someone that we really care about is going through a tough time and we don't understand why. Many reasons lead to us falling out of love because that's the evil one tempting us and making us believe the lies that, that God wants you to be sick and God wanted you to experience this depression, that God wanted this person to die, right? That's, that's just a bunch of horse hockey. God is love. 
Love does not look like any of those things. But the evil one makes us think it, and so then we fall out of love. And then we're back at step one. We've got to fall back in love with God. And then eventually we get to that third step where we just let the love decide everything, which is where Jesus is in the desert. That's where we're heading towards in the season of Lent. We have to go back to the basics. Remind ourselves that Jesus is God. That Jesus suffered and died for us by taking on our human nature and all of our sufferings so that when he rose from the dead, we could share in his eternal life. That he left us himself in the Eucharist. He's fully present, body, blood, soul, and divinity so that we can continue to encounter him, become who we receive, and then go share that love with all those we meet. These are basics of the faith, but we have to remind ourselves of them, especially in a season like this in Lent. So that when we get through this suffering after 40 long days and seven long weeks and we celebrate that triumphant Easter morning, we can truly believe and have this reversion in our heart and know that we are experiencing and encountering the risen Jesus. Not just in the Eucharist, but also in each other. And then we come to a better understanding and appreciation that we share in that mission and ministry to share his love with all those we meet.